Hey all, thank you for joining me today. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Bamboo Lab P1S. This is my honest review and opinions. Right now, I'm showing you the poop shoot that I printed because, yep, this printer does poop, and my side mounted spool holder because I cannot stand rear mounted spool holders, which all the manufacturers seem to be doing these days. Hey ho, that's my gripe, not yours. Um, to get things started, I do like this printer. I do print on it almost 24 7 for the last two months. I print it for my own business, printing things on Etsy and my other stores um, where I'm commissioned to do things and just for fun. And I will say from the get go, I haven't had one single failure yet. Another thing I love is the start time. For me switching on that switch to it being up and running, me ready to use it, it took 10 seconds. Obviously, after the initial setup, but yeah, I do love that and that's something I really do like. Now with all 3D printers, it comes down to the slice or the software used. So with the Bamboo Slice, it's a really good software. If you click the user manual at the beginning, you have access to quick starts, useful tips, 3D text, step files, format, all that good stuff. So if you're struggling and learning and getting used to it, it's a good place to start. Um, from the main menu, you can see all the other options or previous prints. Once you click into the slicer, you can choose your nozzle type, the printer you're using, the type of build plate you're using, um, as well as all the different types of filaments available. So once you do get it set up and start and use it for the first time, it does ask you the option. But I'm clicking and showing you here that you can choose a type of filament, what brand. So they've got Bamboo Labs, um, Overture, Polymaker, and Isam. Um, but you can also choose layer height and a pre-configured sort of mode. So 0.16, 2.8, 0 0.8, whatever your preference is or what the print quality is, you got it. Um, and that all printers and the slices will come along with them. You can decide things if you want to do the layer height, the line width, um, the seams, where the position, precision, ironing, um, wall generation. It is a really comprehensive slicer and it's my favorite one. Um, I'm coming off the back of using Cura and Cura is really good, but Bambi Slicer is just amazing. It does so much more and you can get into those really granular details. Um, you can even change, you know, the surface pattern on the prints. I'm not saying you can't do it in other slices, but I just like the way it's positioned here, the info, um, and just have so much more control over your prints and fine tune. And like I said, this is a plug and play printer almost. You can plug it in, just go use Maker World app, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you really want to get into the granular details and def redefine and sort of home in how you want your prints to look, it's an absolute great slicer to use. Don't get me wrong. It's not the easiest thing to learn off the bat. Um, you know, for beginners, it might be a little bit more difficult, but there are options to change it to make it less advanced so you can just see it a lot easier. But as I'm going through here, you can really get into granular details. So like I said, that advanced setting, if you just want to use it without tinkering too much, untick the advanced, and as you can see, the options minimized. You get less options to choose from. You know, you've got literally from four to seven down to three. Um, up here, you can add more build plates. So if you've got a part where it's got lots of tiny little bits, different colors, different shapes, you can add them on in different play plates. A great other part about the slicer, you can, in the inbuilt into the slicer, you can add objects. So you can see there's Benchy, Bamboo Benchy, um, there's test prints, all sorts of things you can use. And I really do like that feature. Um, you can ch also choose the orientation like you can on any other slicer, but I like that it's got auto leveling, so it will choose the best position for the slicer. So if you click this button at the top here, there you go, puts it flat. It's not 100% perfect, sometimes it does orientate things in a way I probably wouldn't have done it myself, but it's there to just do a quick overview if you need to. Um, another really good feature is being able to slice it and send it directly to the printer. As you can see now I'm slicing the Benchy and it says 48 minutes. That's just based on a different layer height and also the filament you use. That will play a major part. If you use bamboo filament, it works better because I guess it's home tuned for their device. They know every single part of it, so they know what's going to work well. But if you choose the other options, I do find it is going to be a bit longer, but I would rather do that because if it's not that filament, why mess about with it? But the time does decrease and it does show you where all this time is going. So I can see, is it the layer height? Is it the infill? Is it the movement? Is it the spacing? Is it the layer print speed? You can really break down what you see. Now going to the device section of it, this is where you can access your camera. Um, the micro SD card, this is my point of contention. You can't access the micro SD card wirelessly from the P1S. You can the X1 Carbon, but it's, unfortunately you can't do it on the P1S at the moment. You have to manually take it out of your printer and put it in your computer. Um, you have access to full control over the printer from here. So light, lamps, fan speeds, X and Y axis. Um, if you had the AMS, you can see which filaments are inputted on it. Obviously I don't, but if you did, you can see it there. 
yeah, you have full control over the printer from here. Also showed you if you're doing a time lapse when you're doing it. Um, also, if it's recording. So I set mine to record all the time. Don't know why, I guess I want to get the footage. But I do find connecting to the printer through the computer versus the app is a lot more difficult. I find that this green screen pops up, it comes in and comes out. I'm not too sure why, I've reset it and done many other things. It just doesn't seem to work for me. Let me know if you have this pe printer as well and if it works for you please let me know in the comments because i can't get mine to work successfully all the time um but other than that this is a good feature to have like i said the camera is appalling it's a low frame rate camera and bamboo labs have stated themselves website well, so, but yes it is a low frame rate camera but in 2023 we need to have a better quality camera on a printer that's costing almost 600 to 700 depending on where you get it from um, we can also update the printer wirelessly, mine's up to date, um, you can have access to the HMS as well, I name mine Bambi, hey ho, don't know why, but yeah, you can rename the printer, uh, any projects and models you have uploaded, you can carry from there, and you can also do the calibration, and it tells you what the calibration is doing, so when you see the input shaping and it's doing a resonance check, this is why it's doing it and what it's doing and how it's benefiting the printer. Um, you can also have options to print the plate, print all if you have multiple plates at the same time. You can just send it to the printer, so if you don't want it to print it and want it to send it ready to the SD card, you can for later on. Um, that is great, but because it hasn't got a screen and it's got that tiny little screen on the printer, it's really annoying because you have to read all the text files. This is another feature I like, so I can adjust the layer height wherever I want. So if I don't want to have so many steps on the top of this bench tree, I can increase the sorry, decrease the width of the print so it prints a lot smoother there or finer and I also decrease and add it. As you can see, it's changing dramatically. So if I add more, when it goes green, for example, the layer line is thinner, so you get better higher detail and smoother print. Or if I release it and make it go wider, the opposite happens. You can adjust it manually. I just let it usually do it by itself. But if I'm printing spherical objects, I usually do do it to the top of the objects. Um, just to give it a smoother look all the way around because that is fundamentally where you're going to be looking and where the printing is resting. Um, you have also the option to slice an object, which is really good. And a slicer on here, when I mean slice, I mean literally cut it in half. You can perform a cut, so if you need more space, but you can add connectors. So I perform a cut now and it split the Benchy model in half. So there's two halves for Benchy. If you print it like that, then great. Don't know why you would, but I do use this feature a lot when I have oversized prints. So I usually add a plug or a dial so i click the dial for plug for example and when i choose where i want it and it will bridge that connection so now when i click it there um it will allow me when it is sliced slash cut to actually put it back together afterwards as it were if it were a model meant to do that rather than me just trying to align it manually which is a really good feature and i didn't really know it was there till recently if i'm being honest um as you can see when i perform this cut now look there's holes on either side of the bench and the dial's there on the left so when it does print i'll just instinct the so input the dowels into the holes and glue it together and that bench is going to fit perfectly just the way I sliced it, which is a great feature. And you can see I didn't even slice it at a straight angle. It's offset at the moment. Um, but yeah, if I were to do that without the dowels, I could do it, but it'd be a lot more difficult. But just having that feature there really does help. So yeah, it's nice to see that on one of these printers. Now, from the desktop app, you can access Maker World. If I click onto More, where it says Online Models, it will open up a web page, and from there, I can see all the Maker World uploads. Um, I have one there myself, so check it out. But yeah, if I want to, for example, download something, let's just use an Xbox controller, for example, stand. Um, I click that, I can choose the print profile, whichever one the uploader did, or I can just download it and do it myself. But I'll see the top one for now. I open up in Bamboo Studio, so at this moment, I click on that, it's downloaded all the information there, and it's going to open it up automatically on Bamboo Studio for me. Um, as it's downloading it it's going to ask me to want to save the previous one i'm going to say no obviously if there wasn't one day it'll just upload it and from this point it imports all the information from that print profile so the filament the layer height the strength the quality the support anything that this creator uploaded that they said was the best option for this it inputs in here which is really great um so i can literally just slice it now and yeah it will print directly And just like the bench sheet, all the information is important. If this is a great feature to have on a slicer, not all slicers have the storefront available, but yeah, this is a really good feature and definitely a plus for the Bamboo Studio and the P1S in total. Now, I didn't want to harp on about the camera without actually showing you what I'm talking about when I mean the frame rate. Um, I click play now to load into the camera. There's that green skin again. Don't know why it's doing that. But once it does load, you'll see what I mean about the low frame rate. And as I said before, yes, Bamboo Lab had stated it. And it's fine. I'm not saying they're wrong because I knew what I was buying going into it. I just feel that 
all modern printers, especially now if you're gonna have a camera, it needs to be usable. Um, I, you know, I might as well just take a picture myself because that is what it's useful for. Like, it's only good for actually just looking at a print to see if it started. I couldn't follow a print, I couldn't tell if it is or working. Um, as you can see, it cuts in and cuts out. Um, I guess that's it, refreshing. When a print is actually running, it's, I guess I don't see that green screen, but the frame rate is so there, you can see my hand popping in. I'm going in and out, in and out quickly. Um, and yeah, it's just catching it ever so often. It's not an actually consistent frame rate, but hey ho, unfortunately, that's a negative. Now let's talk about the actual mobile app. I actually don't mind it. It is a really intuitive app. As you can see, there's different sections feature, seven day trending. So you can discover all the models made on the Bamboo Maker World uh, website slash app. So if there's something you'd like, you can do it. You can also check the device through the app. And like I said, the camera's not the greatest. It's a bit better on the phone. But from this point, you can access all the same things you can on the desktop app. And as I was saying before, here's that skip object feature that I absolutely love. So if one of these models that I'm printing out of the four wasn't working, I could literally click it disable it and it's not going to print that model if it was 40 for example if it moved off the bed there was no adhesion or something was wrong with it i can just stop that and continue to print the other three um if i had the ams system which i don't you can see what what print filaments you have but from this you have full control of the machine which is really good to have like don't get me wrong if it wasn't for this camera this would be an absolute 10 out of 10 but the fact that that slow frame rate camera is on this machine just really lets this all down because you can do everything. I can download models, send it straight to the printer wherever I am. As long as nothing on the build plate, printing. If I was across the world, I could literally send a print to it. Um, control the temperature. The speed modes are great. The ludicrous speed is absolutely mental. Um, I can't believe it's even prints that fast. So you can change your speed in between prints from the app. Um, yeah, it's really good. You can click it, download it, as I'm showing you now. I can go into a particular model and just scroll about, see what I want. Let's just use the articulated dragon. And once I scroll down, I can go through the pictures, see what the uploader sent. Um, Saber 3D apparently for this one. And I can go add it to my collection. So I've made two collections already, toys, models, and tools. So I can add it if I want to save later. I can read the comments. I can like it, of course, like I can on most things. But when I click print, I can choose my printer. I'll say I've got a P1S, so I'll choose that. And I can choose the different profiles that they've made for it. Different layer heights, different infills. Um, it will show you what, how much filament it's going to use, what filament type, PLA, for example. And it's literally just a matter of clicking print and off I go. So yeah, great app. Now, for this part of the video, I've left the audio on so you can hear the sound of the printer. I don't think many people consider that when buying a printer. I know I don't. Um, it's not the quietest in the world, but it's not the loudest either. I work in the same room as it, and it can be annoying, but I've got used to it now. Um, my wife hates it, I don't. But it is something to bear in mind. Um, this part of it is doing initial calibration, so the fans will spin out 100% to test everything. It's doing its resonance check-in to make sure input shaping is done and it's going to print correctly. Um, but it is quite noisy. It does quieten down, as you heard before, when it is actually printing. It's a more mechanical sound of the movement, but it is something to bear in mind. I'm not printing at these crazy 600 millimeter per second speeds. I'm usually printing at 250, 300 most. If I want something done neatly and I want great finish, I'm printing a functional print, I'm using those speeds. I will only go to the crazy ridiculous speeds from the quick draft. I want to see what something looks like, which I don't think most people are doing when they're buying printers like this. You're buying this because it's consistent. It is faster than bog standard printers, but yeah, those crazy ridiculous speeds. It's great to have on a piece of paper, but I doubt anyone's gonna be using it regularly. I'm about to close the door in a minute and you'll hear what it sounds like when, yeah, it's not actually open and it's not too bad. Now the Bamboo Lab P1S greatest strength is its build quality, its print quality. How it adheres to the plate is next to none. It never fails, it always sticks, sometimes sticks too well. I've printed PLA, PLA+, PETG, ABS, and everything has worked flawlessly. I know without a shadow of a doubt, the prints that I print will come out exactly the same every single time, no matter how many times I print it. I could print multiple objects three, four, five times, one after another, week apart, and it will come out exactly the same every time. Um, obviously, depending on what filament you use, you change different filaments, there'll be different settings, but other than that, it is flawless. I have no issue with it. Their layer lines are perfect every single time. This accuracy of the print, so when it's the slicer tells me it will take two hours, 34 minutes, it will take two hours, 33 minutes. There's no deviation. It's not like a good hour, half an hour, 20 hour, 
well not 20 that's a bit of exaggeration but yeah I've had issues with printing sometimes when they tell me it takes an hour to print an hour and 45 minutes almost you know an hour later it's still printing Bamboo Lab have excellent print quality on this printer um, I haven't had any cloggings which is really good I've used various materials and it's been fine every single time I haven't had any issues with things peeling off the plate only times I've ever had and I'll barely call it a failure is if I've orientated something really weirdly on a bill plate just to get it to fit and I haven't added support so I haven't put enough support density in it and it's fallen off and that's happened once and that was just due to doing tiny tiny pieces now a gripe I have with a P1S is its purge system when changing filaments so everything you're seeing here now is the purge left or the poop when it changes filament I don't use an AMS system I don't use a system that does multicolor prints. I simply unload and reload my filament, just like most people will do. But every time it does that, it needs to purge out the previous filament, which of course is a necessary thing. You don't want two colors mixing to make a new color, i.e. white and red to make pink. But the amount it purges is a bit excessive. It purges it out, pushes it out through its poop shoot at the back and plops it into a little tray, which I printed and had to print myself when it doesn't come with one. And everything you're seeing in this video here is just only using about eight days worth of printing. This isn't even a whole two months worth of printing. This is definitely not helping. This is just wasted filament, unused pieces of plastic that fundamentally are gonna get thrown in a bin. If there was another way to recycle it, I probably am and I will find a way to reuse this because I think it's just an absolute waste and a waste of money. I'm spending money on filament and now I've got to throw some away just because it's changing it. There needs to be a setting on the slice or somewhere where you can choose and decide how much purge is happening when the filament changes happen. I know you can do it when you're doing the AMS system and you can choose that, but when you don't have one, I haven't figured out or seen a way online to determine how much it purges. If anyone has found it or does know, please write a message in a comment, send me an email, let me know, because it is something that really does frustrate me. Now let's talk about the specs of the Bamboo Lab P1S. I'm not gonna name everything it has, but just to name a few. It's got a build volume of 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters, max speed of tool head at 500 millimeters per second, max tool head acceleration 20 millimeters per second, an all metal hot end, a filament run out sensor. It's got a camera in built in it. It does self leveling. It's got the works. I cannot complain with the features on the Bamboo Lab P1S. It does what it says on the box, it does more, it does it clearly, and the specs are there to match it. Now let's talk about what I actually think of the printer. I love it. This is amazing. I'm so glad I bought it. Don't regret it at all. But it's not a perfect printer. This is a great printer for those who just want to think to work straight out of the box or even those who are seasoned and just want to think reliable, want the quality of the print to be absolutely on point every single time. The P1S is definitely a must buy, that's with a shadow of a doubt. It's fast printing sprees, all bed levering, the full color AMS, the consistent great print quality, those are great. But as a cons, it is quite noisy, the camera's not great. If you want to reprint something off memory later on, it needs to be connected to the server. I didn't mention that before. If you print in land, mode or don't connect to the internet or connect to Bambi servers and you want to reprint something later on unless you have the memory card put into your computer you can't redo it from memory it will save on a machine itself but remotely you can't reprint it that's a negative but it's not the end of the world but everyone thank you so much for watching thank you for taking the time to watch this I do appreciate you guys so so much and as always thank you for watching and sweet baby G